Games for the world made locally. Does that sound too far-fetched to be a reality? We catch up with three local game developers who are showcasing their works at the Games Convention Asia. Hi, I'm Janelle from Prodigy Production. Uh, I set up the team about less than six months ago and decided to, with the support of Microsoft and MDA, to actually embark on an XNA project. So this is my game that we newly completed and for the time frame of about four months with a very small team. So How big is the team? The team is about four programmers and two artists, of course, plus some of the part-time freelancers. What kind of uh, education have you had to sort of go into gaming? First batch, I actually graduated from the MYP. Uh, for this special course and the digital entertainment program is a uh, game programming skill. And then what made you decide to go into uh, a gaming? Because gaming is not a traditionally female environment. Maybe tra- traditionally people would think that a lot of games was like big title by big boys. Um, but I personally feel that nowadays the trend is quite equal already. It's like um, there are some minority female that are good programmer as well in the market. Another game we checked out was Rocket Birds. It's a shareware online game about penguins and chickens. Every screen features unique art and the music from a Los Angeles-based MySpace band. Uh, we're setting uh, up a studio here because uh, I think Singapore is perfect for uh, basically attracting uh, foreign talent as well as lo- uh, training local talent. Um, uh, since my partners are from the US, I need to get them to come over here. Um, this is one of the places that w- they would like to settle down. What do you think of the scene here? Well, uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's definitely continuing. Um, I think it's, uh, it's not a, an overnight process. It takes time. Uh, people have to be aware, become aware that, uh, there is a, you know, that there is a lot happening in Singapore. Uh, and then they you know, can base their career decisions on that. Go, th- go to school, go to the proper schools, get the proper training, and basically start you know, working in companies in Singapore and, uh, and learn from, from the experts. Tori Bash was also another game which caught our eye. Um, so in Tori Bash, you well, you aim to win through the most violent way possible. Um, it actually gets really, really complex because what you're doing is micromanaging uh, the various joints. However, we have a lot of players that are actually very good at it. For example, right here, uh, it's actually a replay from one of our players. And um, you can see how he actually manages to you know, do several complex moves at um, one go. How does it work now? Uh, what's your profit model like? Okay, for the PC version, it's a game based on microtransactions. So what we do is you sell a currency, the players buy this currency, then they buy items from us or buy things from other players. Uh, for the Nintendo version, it's, a, it's an online game which you purchase and then you can play it. The three game developers you just saw were part of the Singapore Game Box, which is a pilot initiative to showcase Singapore's video games and prototypes. The Singapore Game Box is a collaboration between IDA and MDA. We are instrumental in putting together a whole set of uh, companies, local developers, and making sure that their products get seen and can be test-driven by the gamer population at large. So what we did is to assemble more than two dozen of uh, these companies which which have products that that are near commercialization. We are giving them an area within uh, certain venue partners to exhibit these games. And the idea is that they will be able to get some feedback from the gamers and also showcase to the international community who might be traveling around the region. And then today we are launching it uh, at the GCA 2009. For more clips on GCA, check out other clips on Razor TV. 